What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, September 28th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the Rogue One at Gary Witta. Good morning. Happy Wednesday on a Tuesday to you, Greg. How are you? Happy Witta Wednesday on a Tuesday to you, Gary. How are you this fine morrow? Yeah, good. Still waking up a little bit. I've not been sleeping. I had one of those nights where I like woke up at two o'clock in the morning and my brain was buzzing and I never quite got back to sleep. So I'm, gotcha. I've got some I've got some iced coffee here. I'm trying to yeah, you do. trying to kick my kickstart myself a little bit this morning. Yeah, I got the big old gallon ready to go right here. So now there when you, you when you get when you get up and the mind can't stop going, do you give in to you? Do you get up? Do you come back down here? Do you clack away the keyboard or do you just lay there in bed staring at the wall? I usually just toss and turn. This morning, I actually did something that I haven't done in a, in a long time. We have a, a an air conditioner that's running in the. I I, I don't know about you or other people, but like I like I really like my bedroom at night when I'm sleeping to be like a fridge. Oh, like yeah. I like it to be oh, as yeah. cold. I, I like sure. it to be quite sure. chilly. Um, the problem with the air conditioner is it, it, it it's it's great. It makes the room nice and chilly, uh, but it can also like really dry you out. So like, I woke up, you know, I, I it sure. dry dries out. You you, you dry, dries out your all your sinuses and i woke up this morning feeling quite stuffy and i did usually i toss and turn and I find some way to go back to sleep i actually did what um i haven't done in the longest time i actually woke up and kind of like just paced around the kitchen and got myself a glass of orange juice and tried to like, it's like am, I, am i up like i don't know it's like three oh, o'clock i hate that i hate that when you do the thing where you wake up and you're like am i really awake sleep. i can't tell what's that i hate it when you wake up and you can't tell like okay cool am i up yeah. for the day now or am i up for like 10 minutes I, I mean, for me, like that, that's like a 5 a.m. Like if, if I wake up after 5 a.m. and I'm not going back to sleep, sometimes I will just get up. And it's actually nice to have. I actually like the, that kind of like super early in the morning zone because you sure. kind of get the house is quiet. You get it to yourself. I can get some work done without being bothered. I can make myself some breakfast. And, you know, you kind of feel like you, you, you can't, you, you, you're getting a few hours ahead of the rest of the world but this morning like i said this morning it was like three four o'clock in the morning I, if i had stayed up that i i'd be i'd be i'd be dead on my feet right now i did eventually manage to get back to say i'm not i'm not sleeping brilliantly this is gonna sound like one of those greg's doing a bit but i assure you there's a logical way i got to this question kevin because i know you'll be the one who attacks for me gary do you fart in front of your kid did you teach your kid not to fart in front of other people no now you're just like let him let him oh, rip. You asked two him. different questions there. Do I fart in, in front of my kid, and do I teach my kid? Did you teach her like, oh, like, oh, you know, like it's rude to do this or whatever the fuck? How, how did you? What did you teach your kid about farts? I mean, my kid loves farts. It's one of her sure. favorite. Yeah, she's a nine year old, so farts is like one of her favorite things to do, to talk about, um, to practice. To sure. you know, it's like a whole. You know, it's a whole culture. It's a whole. You know, when you when you're that old, farting is like a whole lifestyle. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, interesting, interesting. Thank you for that. Like, she will literally come over to me and, like, fart right in my face and go, ha, ah, what do you think of that one? Gotcha. You know? What do you, do you, do you, I'll, do give you... A mar- I'll, I'll give a marks out of 10, gonna, you know? I was going to say, yeah, do you celebrate it? You know what I mean? Had you ever tried to stop her on this, or what did you do? Yeah. Um, my wife aside, it is a very flatulent family. I think my, my kid definitely got my fart genes, because I, I, I do fart quite a lot. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. It's a lot. See, the way we got there is you were talking about, you know, being in the house all alone. You can do whatever you want. I was like, oh, yeah, you can fart. I was in my head. I was like, oh, you fart in any room in the house. Do whatever you want. And then I was I like, mean, well, wait you, a I mean, second. Let me ask this. I mean, so, huh? yeah. Well, you, you, and, you and Jen are together. You've been married for a long time. You've obviously, you know, you're at that part of the relationship, presumably, where, like, you can do whatever. Anything. Anything. Yeah, like, you know, like, it, it, it's, the, it's, the, it's that difference between, like, if you fart, like, if you had fart, let like, rip, like, a massive fart on your first date with Jen, there might not sure. have been a second date, right? But now, presumably, you could let rip like a massive fart on the couch. Of course. And you just, you, you just be like, deal with it, right? And she'd be, yeah, exactly. I guess I have to. I'm locked in. Yeah, this kid is definitely like the anchor. I can't get away now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That definitely yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know with like a young kid, like what you're, how you're doing that. And I, obviously, farts are funny to kids, sure. But I didn't know if she's just in the grocery store farting it up too. And you're just like, she's well, I mean, I think, I think she, she knows better than to, I think she knows better than, than to fart like in public. Sure. But in front of me, of course, um, yeah, it's all good. Aaliyah just texted me, and apparently, I farted on our second date. So I must have made a very good impression on the first date that farting on well, the second I, one I, was. I, was I'm going to say it. This is bad content. I'm going to say it. A lot of people. Oh, Kevin, it's just because you don't like farts, Kevin. It's just because you're. I don't. I, 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 I disagree. Everybody, I, everybody farts. 
right? Everyone Chat seems to be loving it. Don't worry it's about relatable it. Relatable content to everyone. Like we could be talking about an Xbox <laughs> Jeffy game Grub right Grub. now. Hold on, Jeffy Grub Grub. Grub. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just not interested to me. But Jeffy like Grub Grub says, fart. Kevin is a fart. Kevin is a fart, according to Jeffy Grub Grub. All right. Well, now he's banned. I hope he's happy. You're not going to ban him. He's a VIP. You can't do that. Don't worry about it. Uh, but maybe we should move on from the fart talk. Fine. All right. There Sorry, I, Kevin. I'm, I'm about to be a father. I just wanted to know what I need to teach my kid about farts. So I went to the fart Apparently, master. Gary I mean, listen, you, you, you in general about to, about, to, about to go into a realm where farts are the least of your problems. That's true, too. You're, you, you, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna see and witness and do disgusting things that you never thought possible. Sure, sure. And I've done some disgusting stuff in my day. But for now, let's talk about the fact that Bye. New World is out and servers are on fire. Donkey Kong's coming to Super Nintendo World. And Activision Blizzard got out of one of its lawsuits. We'll cover all this and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show over on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. On Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games, you can write in with your questions, your comments, your concerns, everything under the daily video video game son of course on patreon.com slash kind of funny games yes you can be on the show with questions yes you can be on the show with squad ups yes you can get the exclusive post show we do each and every day yes you can get the show ad free yes you can get all of these benefits assigned to things like the kind of funny games cast that's recording live this afternoon and yes you can watch it live on patreon.com slash kind of funny games without the ads with the post show with the bless who all while we record it patreon.com slash kind of funny games however if you have no bucks to toss our way it's no big deal each and every episode of just about anything kind of funny and of course kind of funny games daily goes live on youtube.com slash kind of funny games uh you, uh, you yeah youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com podcast services around the globe each and every weekday for this show kind of funny games daily remember of course there's a new way to support kind of funny outside of patreon outside of twitch uh prime outside of any of the other ways you do it uh we are epic creator code people now we have an epic creator code called kind of funny all one word so if you're using the epic game store for your pc games if you're playing fortnite on your playstation if you're playing rocket league on your switch you can enter in kind of funny wherever you have an epic creator code field and we get a couple of bucks and they say hey thanks kind of funny for telling people to play or use this game or do that thing or whatever and we go no problem we didn't do anything just give us the money and they go oh, fuck this is a bad deal we go <laughs> housekeeping for you i got to interview will Wright, ladies and gentlemen and this might not be a big deal for all of you. Uh, you're like, well, who's Will Wright? Because you're weird. But he created SimCity. He created The Sims. He created Spore. And he's one of the few, I would say, video game industry luminaries I've never got to actually sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one talk with. Bungling by. Exactly. Never came to Up at Noon. Never had that chance. We, our, we, our careers were in different swings when all this stuff happened. Finally got to do it. Uh, it's part of a uh, thing. The Forte uh, is this whole uh, really crazy platform they're using on monetizing games and how to make uh, 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 games more profitable or at least take the business side off of developers but not make them get bought by other publishers it's the stuff we talk about all the time with the first party versus the third party anyways interesting stuff they asked me to co-host uh, or host their show for them so i went over there you can find my interview with will Wright at kind of funny.com slash will Wright. it's all one word uh, obviously because this url kind of funny.com slash will Wright to go see me talk to him and obviously i think you all know how much sim city means to me it was a big deal for me to finally get to sit down and talk to him and a really fascinating conversation about his new game and it's a it's a Will Wright game, <laughs> what he's pitching right now. We will see what that comes together as. It's this weird dreams mashup, but it's not dream, but it is dreams, but it's in your head and they're using an AI. It's crazy stuff. On top of that, uh, if you wanted something a little bit more light, remember the McDonald's Ultimate Item Tournament is ongoing right now on Twitter.com slash kind of funny vids. We got through the breakfast uh, bracket yesterday, Gary. Hash Browns won. How did you feel about that? I had, I had a McDonald's hash brown this morning. Do, do you think it's worthy to be the winner of that bracket? I mean, I think it's a good side item. I, I wouldn't. You know, it's not like the. It's not like the only thing you would have for a breakfast. I paired it with the um, with the sausage McMuffin, which is my my personal favorite. Right. Item. Yeah, I, I did want. No, I was pulling for the McMuffin menu. The item on the breakfast menu is the uh, chicken biscuit. Mm, yeah, not on the McDonald's North American menu dot com. So that's why it didn't get included. You know, in our actual breakdown there, we're oh, trying to play it fair. I mean, they do offer it. It's, I think it's like a reg. I think it's like a. It's not like a special thing anymore. It's like always on my local McDonald's menu. Take it up with Ronald McDonald. We went to McDonald's dot com and used their menu to build our bracket today. It's desserts right now. If you're watching live, Twitter dot com slash kind of funny vids to vote on baked apple pie versus hot caramel Sunday and hot fudge Sunday versus chocolate chip cookie. These are the play in games to get to go up against the McFlurry and or two McFlurries M and M. 
DMs or Oreos. That's ongoing. Even if you're listening to this way later, you can go to twitter.com slash kindoffunnyvids as we march to Friday to crown the ultimate McDonald's item. And, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, thank you to our Patreon producers, uh, the Destiny 2 PC clan, the kind of funny Destiny 2 PC clan, and Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by Liquid IV, ExpressVPN, and Demon Slayer, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. Time! For some news. Five items on the Roper Report, Kev. Oh, let's start in the pc neck of the woods gary number one new world is out and it's got a little bit of a rocky start we're going to start over at GameSpot, where cameron koch says new world amazon game studios long delayed mmo is finally live and it has quickly become the number two game on steam with more than six hundred thousand concurrent players and counting unfortunately that also means server issues and long login queues for many players looking to dive in most of the game's North American and European servers are currently at high population counts, with a few still at medium population. Amazon says it's looking uh, into the problems and wants to get everyone into the game. New World tweeted, Thank you, everyone, for the tremendous launch day support. We are aware of login queues and server issues. The team is working hard to get them addressed and get everyone in and playing. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we're going back to, uh, oh, this is still Cameron, uh, but his actual words are no longer a twit, tweet. The game is also seeing massive popularity on Twitch, which is owned by Amazon. Currently, more than 750,000 people are watching New World on the platform, and those watching certain channels and who link their Steam accounts can earn Twitch drops for in-game items. New World's launch comes after multiple delays and beta periods. The game was originally set to release in spring 2020 before being delayed three more times closed beta period for the game earlier this year saw that more than 200,000 concurrent players. Amazon has a lot riding on New World. The company's previous game, the free-to-play hero shooter slash Battle Royale Crucible, failed to make any kind of, I'm sorry, failed to find any kind of audience and was canceled a few months after released. A planned Lord of the Rings MMO from the studio was also canceled. Gary, Mr. PC Gamer Witta, where are you yes. with New World? Um, I actually, um, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm going to try it. I actually um, uh, put a tweet out early today asking, you know, people if I should, uh, if I should jump in. I got a mostly positive response, a little bit mixed. Some people said they thought the beta was dull, but for the most part, people said, yeah, check it out. But they've all said the same thing: is like, watch out for the queues because it's a problem right now. Yeah, um, yeah. This isn't uncommon, obviously, with the launch of a major new MMO. I still have um, very traumatic memories going all the way back to uh, Thanksgiving of uh 2004 when world of warcraft first launched and it was just an absolute shit show like endless queues and then when, and then when you got into the game it was choppy and buggy and you would get kicked out they had all kinds of server issues you would think amazon which is one of the biggest providers of servers and web services in the world would have this down right and i i don't know why this is but like the biggest companies in the world it doesn't matter who they are the biggest game companies in the world when they roll out a new product a new game and everyone piles in no matter what redundancy or or you know uh, capacity they feel like they've built in to make the game as you know to, to try to avoid these kind of problems they just happen every single time and maybe that maybe that maybe the immediate popularity of the game has caught me by surprise i'm looking at some of the numbers right now there's almost a million people watching it on um twitch we're looking at these very long queues i don't know if you can take the like opening couple of days of interest as an as a barometer of like whether or not this game is going to have you know long-term appeal probably not it's you know it's the new it's the shiny new object but a lot you know there's lots of it's shiny new objects every week but this one is it seems to really be uh bringing a lot of people in so i don't know i'm i'm intrigued about it this is this is why i usually don't play games at launch because it's 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 always the worst time to play a new game especially an online game it's going to be at the, it's going to be the buggiest it's ever going to be it's going to be you know the most crowded it's ever going to be in terms of everyone trying to get in on day one uh so a lot of people i've seen a lot of people yeah this morning complaining about a suboptimal experience again it is a little bit of it surprising again from amazon given just how much you know back-end internet infrastructure they have amazon web services basically props up half of the internet if not more sure. they're one of the biggest players in the in the 
you know, in the, you know, online server space. So may, maybe it's reductive or naive of me to think, well, surely Amazon can just like throw servers at the problem and fix it. I've talked about this before and, and, and said like every time there's a buggy launch or, or, or you know, a server crashy launch, why don't they just build in 10x the redundancy and just, you know, like, over, like overdo it so we don't have these issues. You can actually have a smooth launch for once. And I've had network engineers and software developers say to me, it's not as simple as that. Or, you know, companies just aren't willing to spend the money you know, to, to, to do it. It's, it's not as simple of equations, like just throw money at the problem. Uh, I wish it, I wish it were, but yeah, it's, it's yet another case of, you know, super, you know, game with a lot of hype, which is, you know, there's a double edged sword, super popular, but the popularity is part of the problem. People are waiting hours to get in and play and that itself can create a negative, you know, um, it's... impression. Maybe someone is like, Oh, the new one, this sounds good. Shows up four hour queue, fuck this. And they go off and they never come back. You don't know. Yeah. It's the ongoing, never-ending problem with launching an online service game, especially a popular one, right? There's always this issue. And to your point, Gary, of the fact that it's Amazon Web Services, right? AWS, you see everywhere that runs everything on the internet. And the fact that even that they're you know, going to struggle with this at launch, I think really, if anything, proves the fact that it's not an issue of having enough servers. It's got to be an issue of what it's like getting people through the door onboarding all this other stuff and all the other technical shit that I know nothing about. Obviously I, I there's, I, there's so few games that you look at and go, okay, cool. This has been no problem. What I find interesting about the new world one, right. Is that I'm looking right here on their uh, launch thing. If so, talking here for the west coast right uh servers went live at 8 a.m uh you know for the u.s east coast they went live 8 a.m eastern time and 8 a.m around this is the rollout so it's really one of those that hasn't been going on too long and so obviously we're talking about these problems these struggles and the real ones i have uh over in the chat here i've seen a couple different times uh om jesus go through pulling up uh, twitch and i'm sorry pulling up steam reviews and putting in the twitch chat like this one amazon's own oh amazon owns aws the biggest server farm in the world they host netflix facebook twitter and twitch yet they can't spare enough server capacity to launch their flagship game very disappointed I read that and I see that and it's like thing. I then I look over to where I have New World up over here because I'm going to play it after Games Daily. I look over here at the client, right? And when we started this and I looked at the West Coast servers, right? What was I seeing, Gary? I was seeing a whole bunch of medium, low, not crazy. But then as you scroll down, that's where you see all these highs. Like the entire bottom of it is filled up with highs right there. And you're like, yikes. Like why is it? What are they fixing it? Are they on it? Well, how easy is it for even Amazon? I don't know. If I, if I was, if Twitch, I mean, I'm sure like Be Bezos is like too high up the food chain, so he, he probably doesn't even know what New World is. Um, but whoever is like the top person at Amazon who was in charge of the New World project, I would, I, I, I would have said, listen, I don't care what it costs. I don't know what kind of network, you know, wizardry we have to do. This game is going to fucking support every player that wants to play it on day one, even if it's twice as many. Like, I, I want to know your absolute worst case scenario for how many players are going to try and play this game at once on day one. And I want you to quadruple that at least. We're going to build in so much fucking redundancy that we, we are, we are going to do what no MMO has ever done at launch and have a smooth launch where everyone can get in without a queue. And again, maybe it's very naive of me to think that. I'm sure anyone that's ever worked on the kind of the backend network application of, of launching an MMO could give me a very detailed explanation as to why it's not as simple as that. Again, you can't just throw money at the problem. That may, may well be the case. Um, it is particularly surprising coming from Amazon, a company that does have this infrastructure. They, I guess they weren't able to, you know, to leverage that. You have to remember these companies are very siloed. And just because you know, Amazon Games is building an MMO, that doesn't necessarily mean that Amazon Web Services is going to be there to back them up. You know, it's often difficult to get these big Leviathan companies, you know, all the different kind of departments to, you know, to play, to play nice together. It's, 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 it's simply not that. It's just not that simple. These big companies are often very, very um, dysfunctional. And there's even internal competition between the different departments at these companies. So it's not terribly surprising. It's still a bit disappointing. I think one of the reasons why it might, might be really popular on Twitch right now is all the people that can't get in sure. are watching their favorite streamers play sure. it instead because the streamers can get in. I guarantee you all the streamers you're seeing playing it right now, they're whitelisted. They've got the Disney Fast Pass that's getting them to the front of the queue. They're not waiting in line because Amazon wants the top streamers playing the game. That's the new That's the new. Me they don't care about magazines or IGN or GameSpot anymore. They care about 
you know, what the shrouds and the sacriels and, you know, the Dr. Disrespects Indeed. and the, the ninjas and the, you know, uh, uh, so of the world likes. are playing. And so they, they give them the super platinum fast pass that guarantees they can stream the game. They get, they, and they, so they never experience a queue. And what you're seeing when you see these top streamers play the game is not the experience you're going to get. You're going to see Ninja log on and go, ooh, straight in, because he's got that, he's got that Willy Wonka golden ticket that the rest of us chuds don't have. Not necessarily. I've definitely seen people 100%. who are part of the streamers chug and not get where they can get to. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel, first of all, I feel like Bezos is probably keeping an eye on this with how bad the last one was. Like, that was an embarrassment to them, right? To Amazon as a whole them launching the the their last game and having to be like we're gonna we're gonna take it back you know um yeah and as far as like i have a feeling it's gonna be broken for a lot of people and you'll see a lot of st streams where from what i mean and correct me if i'm wrong what i saw go through in the chat was uh the people who have gotten in say oh it's great once you're in it's just these cues and then when we were talking about this jace leland here said in the chat live uh they're spinning up new servers but people have already decided on specific servers to play on so yeah. everyone waits in a queue and it's a great example right because like when we started this i popped over here and i or when i started up a new world like literally right before we went live because number one i wanted to try to start uh, queuing up and then number two i wanted to see how bad it was right i put in our uh, kind of funny slack i was like hey what server are we playing on right andy responds where mike has told everybody to go play and i look over here and that's one of the high servers right because yeah i'm sure it was one of the first that was spun up uh you know mike w was on right away ready to play and then that's where you got to now try to queue up if you want to go with your friends and stuff like that i, I installed it earlier today i'm going to jump i'm going to jump in after this as well just to see what the queues are like for me um there, there are there are some interesting points here first of all about just jumping to another server you're right a lot of players don't have that luxury because typically what happens is like if you want to play with a group of friends you all you all decide that you're going to play on a specific server right so you can play together so if you're going to if you're going to, if, if it turns out all oh, this server is too populated i'll jump somewhere else you need to make sure that everyone's going over you know into another server or you'll be you know you'll be stuck on your own the other interesting thing just in general just in terms of like this the state of the mmo landscape is one of the reasons why new world might be uh, at least initially, really attracting a lot of interest is that World of Warcraft just doesn't dom just does not dominate the landscape the way it did. Sure. I remember, you know, ever since 2004, for you know the last 10, 15 years, it's been very, very difficult for any um, you know a, a competitive MMO. You've seen Lord of the Rings online, and you know uh, Guild Wars, and so many other games have struggled to you know achieve anything like the success of World of Warcraft because World of Warcraft is just that's just been the absolute number one dominant player and there have been lots of other mmos out there that have been able to kind of eke out a living basically kind of keep their head above water everquest is still fucking going um the dc universe but, online you know, world of warcraft has cast a very very long shadow over the market and made it very difficult for other you know, you know other similar games to kind of gain much of a foothold but those fucking days are over world of warcraft is 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 on the wane players are deserting sure. it they you know they've, they've gotten tired of of the same old same old it sounds like blizzard's been making some very uh, poor creative decisions regarding uh, World of Warcraft. There's the there's the bigger, you know, Activision Blizzard stigma that's building up around the game right now. So World of Warcraft is like really, really, really vulnerable right now. Final, you know, the Final Fantasy 14 has come in and kind of ate a lot of its lunch, and there is an opportunity now. And I think maybe Amazon has sensed this blood in the water. There is an opportunity now for another MMO to come in and maybe supplant World of Warcraft. I don't know if that will happen anytime soon. World of Warcraft is still number one. But it's dropping like a stone. And I think it's probably sometime in the next few years, we might have a new number one MMO. Maybe New World, maybe something else. Well, I mean, I, at this point, I think it would be Final Fantasy, right? Like, I think Final Fantasy XIV has been nipping at their Final heels for Fantasy a long 14 time. Is probably, yeah, it is the number one contender. If it, if it isn't already, I'm sure in a number of different metrics, it's already beating uh well of course it's, it's it's definitely having a big moment as a lot of the bigger you know world, world of warcraft streamers who built their entire careers their twitch careers streaming world of warcraft your, are now leaving to and your going point to of, final fantasy 14 who are now playing new world those are big seismic you know there's a handful of like you know big movers in the twitch online space if they if they move over to another game they're going to take a lot of players with them and i think one of the parts uh, you're nailing is that yeah like wow is old Right. And I know they've done updates and they've done things, but anytime I've tried to play WoW before and I jump in, I'm like, oh, this just isn't the kind of uh, world slash gameplay that connects for me. Right. And that's why New World is something I want to play. Like, I'll read from the press release here the first two, or not the first two, two paragraphs from it. In New World, in case you don't know, by the way, because we are just talking about this game as if everybody has the same universal knowledge. In New World, players are shipwrecked on, and I would say, what do you say, Kevin? Eternum? 
a turn uh, where the fundamental right. laws of life and death are broken. New World offers players endless opportunities to fight, forage, and forge as they explore and conquer the island and cover its dark mysteries. Players can band together in factions to vie for control of the map in massive player versus player battles, or venture off solo or in small groups to explore uh, Aderim. What did I, what did, what did, you, did you agree with me, Kevin? I did. I did agree with okay. you. Okay. So it's like, it's like, turn them. Is that what you said? Turn them. Turn them, but they spell it with the A and the E. That always gets me. A turn them and learn its secrets. New World features real time action combat that is skill based and visceral. Every swing, dodge, and block matters. A turn them is teeming with wretched creatures, twisted by centuries of death and revival. And players must hone their weapon and combat skills in hope to survive. New World offers a wide var- variety of uh, multiplayer combat experiences, and then it runs through all of them. But that's the general gist of what you're getting here. And like, the real time, com- the you know, the real time action combat speaks to me. It, you know, it sounds and reminds me of Kingdoms of Amal- Amalur: Reckoning, which of course I love. Uh, you know, the only MMO I ever connected with was DC Universe Online, which of course because I'm a DC Comics fanboy, but also because I enjoyed the combat and how that worked of using your buttons to actually pull off combos, to actually punch, kick, use your gadgets or whatever power you had and stuff like that. This seems interesting. Yeah, it's, I'm, I hope I can get I, into I, that. I, I watched I watched the trailer for New World this morning and you know me, Greg, like I, I'm into the narrative and the mythology and the lore, like the world, you know, the experience and like the context of what I'm doing is going to suck me in. And from watching the launch trailer, I wasn't entirely clear like what the mythology was or how it's distinctive. It looks like it almost has this kind of like, you know, conquistador again, like, yeah. you know, kind of discovery of the new world kind of vibe to it. And that's, that, that is a bit of a shift from the typical kind of world of Warcraft, you know, Tolkien, you know, orcs and trolls and humans and, you know, what have you. So it seems a little bit different, but I don't know. It, it, it's not, it's not speaking to me in like, Oh, like that seems like a world I really, really want to get involved in. Maybe it will be, um once i've had a chance to actually try it out which i will which i will do you know q's allowing the other thing the the other question that i have uh i may you you may know this or or not i'm not sure but like i i wonder if it is just another mmo of basically in the in the sense that it's the same as all the ones we've we've ever played or if it's something fundamentally different i've played many 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 hours of world of warcraft i was in a Mm -hmm. high-end you know pvp raiding guild for years i did all the end game content and i played a bunch of other mmos i'm very familiar with the grind, the grind. you know yeah, level one is the grind you knew level, level one a guy says go beat te- 10 rats to death with a stick and i'll give you a slightly better pair of trousers right yeah. level 100 go beat 10 giant rats to death with this legendary stick and i'll give you an epic pair of trousers like the games fundamentally don't change you, you know the, the numbers just go up and we're all familiar with that and yet there is something about that just you know press the button and get a pellet that you know it, it keeps us <laughs> that gameplay loop keeps us coming back it's the uh, checklist more. right i'm just it's wondering the, if new world's making any checklist. effort to kind of do something different other than you know beat 10 rats to, to, to death with a stick and i'll give you a, you know a nicer belt um it's I, I guess you know if it ain't broke don't fix it it's it's worked now for many for many years but um I don't know. I just wish there was. I wish. I wish we could invent something different, a different kind of loop, or just just another way to to do this. It isn't just about you know, you know, having that kind of endorphin rush every time you ding for another level. I don't know. Maybe that's good enough. Maybe the way it's always going to be. But I've got to believe there's another way to approach an MMO game that isn't just you know this same fucking loop. Sure. I'm on uh, Fextra uh, here on Twitch's channel, and I see his little uh, queue over here. What do we got here? I'm looking through. So crusader or no crusade canary mine defeat corrupted or, i'm sorry defeat eight corrupted at the canary mine uh crusade even rock cory the uh, defeat eight corrupted at even rock so yeah it seems like it wow. might be a little bit of the so, okay so it's, it's more it's more of the fucking same it's just mmo comfort food and i don't there's, there's there's a broader discussion to be had here like is that just good enough? Is that is that actually what we want? Do we do we just do we want to just keep beating ever bigger rats over the head with ever more you know shiny and and uh, impressive uh, sticks? And I'm watching the number. Oh, I hit this rat and and I did five damage. And again, ten years later, I hit this rat and I did five thousand damage. But it's the same fucking game. You, the game's not fundamentally changing. You're you're just you're just you're doing bigger and bigger numbers and wearing shinier trousers. Maybe I, I think there's a really interesting question about like, is that just what we want? And, and is that what we're going to continue to want and be satisfied by? Or is there an opportunity out there for a developer to, to fundamentally reinvent our approach to these, these, you know, massively multiplayer online games? And I'm way out of my comfort zone here. So please, uh, you're wrong me if you are a bit. But I remember, you know, uh, when I was dating Christine and she was super into Guild Wars 2. And Guild, Guild Wars 2 always was that they had shaken it up. Not 
I mean, there still was go kill 30 rats or whatever the fuck it was, but it was like the way open uh, um, uh, battles would work and the way that live events would work and stuff like that. They're, they were shaking it up and doing things differently in the MMO uh, equation in that game. I think that's what it comes down to more is I think it, when you dial it back and even to dial it back, I would say, I feel it's so hard because obviously, Gary, you know, you and I have been around way too long. And so I remember when, you know, at IGN, people would come back from previews in 2007, 2008, 2009 and be like, oh, this game is it's got RPG mechanics in it. It's an RPG light, right? Where it was it, what you would now just call a third person action game. And yeah, there's a leveling system and you're doing whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like as all of those things have spread out and changed the way we think of games, I think even at the core of a open world rpg is a bit of what we're talking about with mmo right because even there it'll be all right go kill x number of whatever or go find i mean you know this person's sick and we need x amount of mushrooms or some shit like that like there's yeah. still no matter what you do to a game uh, those kind of games i feel like you bring it back in somewhere in that dna is the idea of just a quest log up in the top right corner that is go off and get x amount of certain things yeah, and like I, I, I'm going to give it a try. I'm looking at my Steam right now. A bunch of my friends, I see Snowbite, Snowbite Mike's playing it right now. Dr. Lupo's mm -hmm. playing it. A bunch of people on my Steam friends list are playing it. I've got a little, uh, you know, Discord friends group that I'm, I, I want to gauge the interest. You know, again, for me, and this is true with so many different kinds, you know, it, it's, it's universally true across all games. If you're playing with friends, then that's just, that's just always a, you know, a fun experience. Uh, multiply. If I, if I were to jump into New World and just play on my own, I pr there's a good chance I'm going to get bored in a couple of days. But if I'm playing with a group and we're questing together and it's also a social totally, you know, totally. outlet, then I'm much more likely to stick around. And the, the, the little that I've read on uh, New World does seem to suggest that they are leaning into um, social interaction between players being, you know, like like you, there are things that you need to do. I mean, again, all MMOs do this to beat like high end bosses. You got to go with a group, but it does sound like maybe they've tried to find a way to structure the gameplay around encouraging you to socially interact with with other players. Yeah, I mean, you have to do that in MMOs, but that is definitely what keeps people around. So we're gonna have to wait and see on what this actually shakes out to be. How many people are still playing it a week from now, a month from now, and so on and so forth. But obviously, you, I'm sure, kind of funny games Daily will be uh, if it's a meteor a meteoric uh, success or if there's immediately a huge drop off. While we've been live, actually having this conversation, Benji Sales on Twitter tweets: Amazon Games MMO New World has reached over 700,000 concurrent players on Steam. This makes it the biggest launch of any game in 2020. 2021 on steam and the largest since cyberpunk 2077 in december 2020 it also hit over 900,000 concurrence on twitch uh gargantuan performance uh, they throw out there again it, on, on the one hand it's hard it, it's really hard to go by that because you know we've seen so many games have big explosive launches in the initial days and then it drops off as people realize it's not you know for them once they've had a check like, right now everyone's checking it out to see if yeah, it's of course for them, of course right and some people are going to decide that it's not the question is like how sticky is the game how many players are going to drop off but again on the other side i'll come back to that point i made earlier if if, there, if, if this is very advantageous timing for amazon uh five years ago 10 years ago certainly or even five years ago launching a new mmo would have been a license to just lose money because world of warcraft was just so hard to pull players away from but new world is launching into an mmo landscape right now where world of warcraft is bleeding players so many are like are at a real big moment of disillusionment where they're like i want i, I want to go somewhere else i want I, I like playing mmos but world of warcraft's no no longer for me what else is out there that's why they're, they're checking out final fantasy 14 and now here's something here's another new thing for them to check out so could be perfect timing for amazon if it's gonna if they're gonna succeed it's gonna be now we shall see ladies and gentlemen and if the gentlemen uh twitch.tv slash kind of funny games can get into the servers uh snowbike mike and the crew including bruce green are trying new world after kind of funny games daily if it works out of course you can catch it live twitch.tv slash kind of funny games if you're already watching and if you're listening or watching later you can check it out to see if it worked out youtube.com slash kind of funny plays of course ladies and gentlemen i'd also encourage you to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games you could write in to be part of the show you could get the exclusive post show we do each and every week Day. you can watch us record the kind of funny games cast live this afternoon but more important for right now you could get this show ad free but you're not watching on patreon.com slash kind of funny games jack so here is a word from our sponsor
This podcast is brought to you by Liquid IV. Working out, meditating, treating yourself with so many different types of self-care, it can be hard to remember one of the most fundamental ways to take good care of yourself, hydration. No, Liquid IV is not an actual IV drip, but it does hydrate you faster and more efficiently than plain old water. It contains the perfect balance of vitamins that help you hydrate quicker. How do I, Greg Miller, know so much about Liquid IV? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I like to drink too much. And often after I've had too much, to drink the next day we use liquid iv around here you can all i've also used it you know when you're sick uh, you, maybe off the plane you took a plane ride and you're like ah, I'm, 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 I'm really thirsty you know what i mean you're dehydrated because the pressurization use it then. but also if you learn to get your drink on like greg does throw back a few brewskis like stone cold steve austin uh, the next morning uh liquid iv does help i mix it with my water quite a bit grab your favorite liquid iv flavors nationwide at walmart or you can get 25 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code kfgd at checkout that's 25 percent off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code KFGD at liquidiv.com. Our next sponsor, why it's Express VPN. Going online without Express VPN is like leaving your dog with the nearest stranger while you run into the store. I would never do that to Portillo. Uh, most of the time, it's probably fine, but you never know. What if they're a serial dog napper? Uh, well, every time you connect to an unencrypted network, like a cafe or a hotel, your online data is not secured. Any hacker on the same network can gain access to and steal your personal data. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's been easy because, of course, ExpressVPN has been a sponsor of Kind of Funny for quite some time, a long time, and the one, the only, Cool Greg has used it quite a bit. Uh, all the internet surfing he does, all the different shows he's watching, all the different things he's streaming. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash games. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash games, and you can get an extra three months free expressvpn.com slash games and our final sponsor of the day demon slayer it's time to become the blade that destroys demons in demon slayer kimitsu no yaba the hinokami chronicles launching october 15th on ps5 ps4 xbox and steam uh tanjiro comes home to find his family murdered and his sister transformed into a demon well that sucks understandably my boy tanjiro is devastated by this and decides to become a demon slayer to restore his sister's humanity and seek revenge on the demon that slaughtered his family based on the anime demon slayer the game's adventure mode lets you relive your favorite memorable moments and thrilling battles then there's a versus mode where you can choose any combination of two characters to face off. With exhilarating gameplay and a whole bunch of skills and characters from the anime, rise up to become the strongest of the Demon Slayers. Pre-order Demon Slayer and unlock two bonus characters and get early access to the game. To pre-order, just click the link in the description. Gary, I hear you want to apologize to me. No. Seems like one where when, when in the middle of the ad, you said you said something to the lines of, "Oh, it seems like some of the top streamers for New World are oh, waiting." Yeah, man, yeah. I'm, I'm, Proving I'm once again that Greg uh, Miller was right. I'm happy to, clar I'm happy to clarify. I accept your uh, apology. I said earlier that I, 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 I said I would guarantee that none of the top streamers who are playing uh, Gary, he, um, he, he New World on Twitch right now are being accused because Amazon will have whitelisted them. Uh, but apparently, some uh, some of the biggest streamers are sitting in queue. So either they're not either they're not getting whitelisted, uh, which is a major mistake on uh, Amazon uh, PR's uh, part. They should be whitelisting those streamers so they can get into the game and play. Um, uh, or uh, the systems, you know, something in the system's broken. Either I mean, you know, obviously everything's broken right now. People can't get into the game. It could be uh, a broader issue. But you know, it's again, it's. It's really, I feel bad for game developers when this happens. We, we, you know, I feel like we say this every time, right? They work for years on these games and then the, the, the launch gets botched and, you know, the, the first impression of the game is, is not a favorable one. Could be that it's a very good game. If it just had like a smooth launch, people would have, would have um, you know, embraced it. But a lot of people, again, there's, there's going to be people that are going to try to play New World today and go, ah, fuck this, and they'll just never come back. And there's, there's a player lost. Apology accepted. Thank you for apologizing, Gary. It means a lot to me. If it uh, makes you feel better, Greg. It does. It also, I want to know. That's what you need. Shout out to the live chat who was making fun of my pronunciation. I'm like, I haven't pronounced anything, pronounced anything in a while. And then I was remember, oh, right, that fucking Demon Slayer ad. <laughs> they're just making up words and putting it in there. I have no idea what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> Number two on the Roper Report. Uh, Blizzard has settled one of its lawsuits. This is what the U.S. Equal Opportunity Commission. We're going to go to Cat Bailey over at IGN.com. Activision Blizzard has settled the lawsuit filed earlier today. Uh, 
has settled the lawsuit filed earlier today by the U.S. Equal Opportunity Commission. Uh, in a release, Activision Blizzard promised to create an $18 million fund to compensate employees affected by discrimination and harassment. It also intends to upgrade its policy, yeah, upgrade its policies and practices to prevent and eliminate harassment and discrimination in the workplace, as well as to overhaul its performance review system. Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick called the agreement constructive and promised to be vigilant against harassment. There is no place anywhere in our company for discrimination, harassment, or unequal treatment of any kind, and I am grateful to the employees who bravely shared their experiences. I am sorry that anyone had to experience inappropriate conduct, and I remain unwavering in my commitment to make Activision Blizzard one of the world's most inclusive, respected, and respectful workplaces, end quote. The deal will see a third-party equal uh, consultant review. Yeah, I got all that. Activision Blizzard's new uh, initiatives. In the meantime, any money not given as compensation will be divided between charities that, quote, advance women in the video game industry or promote awareness around harassment and gender quality, as approved by the EEOC. Worth, that's the end of the, uh, that's the update to Kat's article. It's worth noting, of course, this is not the big lawsuit that had happened from the state of California. Uh, Kat's original article started with the EEOC joins the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing in accusing Activision Blizzard of a culture of harassment and discrimination. It alleges that female employees were harassed, paid less, and retaliated against for complaining. Gary, $18 million? A drop in the bucket. For I'm sorry, was Blizzard. it Kotick? Was that Kotick you were just quoting? That was Kotick. So uh, the, the part that stuck out for me there was Kotick saying, I remain unwavering in my commitment to you know, creating a, you know, inclusive... To make, um, a, you know, make Activision Blizzard whatever. one of the world's most inclusive, respected, and respectful workplaces. Well, why didn't he, why, well, why hasn't he done that then? Nah, I've been busy. I mean, I, I, I don't understand how he's saying that, that he's saying I remain unwavering in my commitment, which makes it sound like he's been unwavering in his commitment. Well, you fucking failed, didn't you? You no, haven't big, done that. The company's not time. respected. It's not respectful. It's it's you know, there's there's a there's a deep cancer of, of harassment and bullying and exclusion at your company. Your your unwavering commitment so far is not fucking good enough. So how is more of the same going to fix anything? And the $18 million thing, that's a bunch of bullshit as well. Because these, that, that's, that, I mean, Bobby Kotick probably got that money from the fucking down the back of his sofa cushions. $18 million is, is, is nothing to a fucking company like Blizzard. Big companies like this, I guarantee you, the big oil companies, the big mega multinational companies, they factor these kind of penalties and, 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 and fines into the price of doing business. Oh, you know, there's probably going to be some scandals in the next few years. So like, we'll factor, we're probably going to lose this much money, you know, settling things out of, you know, lawsuits and out of court settlements and things like that and harassment, you know, paying to make things go away. That's all just factored into the price of doing business for these big companies. They're not even fucking flinching. Unless you're talking about billion, multi-billion dollars of penalties and sanctions, things that actually would be sizable enough to hurt these companies, they don't give a fuck. Unless someone's actually going to go to prison, they don't fucking care. Oh, oh, it's like a parking ticket for them. They'll pay the parking ticket and fucking move on. Nothing's going to change. It's. It, I, it, I'm getting every time there's a new uh, uh, development in the story, I just get more and more fucking annoyed. Well, if you'd like me to make you even more angry, the one thing that Cat's update doesn't call out uh, that over on GameSpot.com, Eddie's does is this. In a filing, Activision Blizzard said it denies any wrongdoing, but has agreed to this settlement in an event, any event to avoid, quote, any expense, distraction, or possible litigation. Fuck off. So it's, this is just hush money. Yeah, this is just like, you know what? We didn't wrong, do anything wrong. Here's the money. Dollars anyway. Here's the money. I mean, we just shut up listen, about listen, it. Listen, I listen, remain, listen, I am listen, a stalwart of me. virtue. Would they give me $18 million? I don't need them to say they've done anything wrong to me. Just give me the $18 million. I, Fuck off. Statement from Activision Blizzard. Defendants, ex defendants expressly deny that they subjected any individual or group of individuals to sexual harassment, pregnancy discrimination, and or related retaliation, deny all allegations of wrongdoing, liability, damages, and entitlement to other relief set forth in the action, whether arising under Title VII or ana analogous state and local laws, deny any group or systematic discrimination or harassment, and deny that any of their policies and procedures are inadequate. However, these parties recognize that through this decree, the parties can avoid the expense, distraction, and possible litigation associated with such a dispute, and thus the parties wish to resolve the issues through this decree. <laughs> 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 
fucking get them, California Department of Fair Employment Housing. <laughs> just fucking yeah, keep I mean, going. Well, the season, I mean, there's all. I mean, there's all kinds of. Yeah, every day it seems to get worse for them. They can keep throwing. They can keep throwing money at it and settling things and setting up their little foundations or whatever. Again, it, it, this is all about damage limitation for them. I guarantee you, no one at no one at Activision from Kotick on down, um, you know, at the, the senior executive level, is genuinely interested in fixing this problem they what they're interested in is making it go away with with uh -huh. with, 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 with as little change and as little aggravation as possible for as cheaply as possible let's pivot to some good news instead all right number three we're going to go to kotaku where ari notice or notice uh says twitch is about to start verifying its chatters uh the game is also soon oh no i had a miss i had a miss i had a copy and paste there uh kevin tell uh, gary about your breakfast Gary, for breakfast, I had an egg bagel, which I think is the best bagel because of its softness that was toasted lightly with a little bit of cream cheese on top and some chopped up smoked salmon. It was very good. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I, like, was, I do like a bit of lox. It was very, very good. Now, I was Where'd a little upset. From? What was that? Where'd you get it from? Or did you make it yourself? Um, well, the, the bagels were leftover bagels from Sunday that we went to visit Paul. I, mean, I guess when you toast them, but I mean, they, 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 you know, you really want bagels to be like fresh day off, don't you? You don't Here's want day off bagels. The secret about bagels is it's all a scam. Uh, when <laughs> Roger Picorni got, brought us an obscene amount of bagels. We actually still have some when he came to visit for July frozen, 4th right? weekend. You freeze them, Gary, yeah. and you get a wet, a, a dampened paper towel, wrap it up with that, throw it in the microwave for like, 30 seconds i know i can see it in your eyes the like that can't be right it works so well gary i mean it i just eat, i just so well. fresh bagels the day of and don't, no, i don't do any and, of this and stuff. gary gary some of us ha don't have the luxury of having uh, you know a bagel store minutes away i do, I, I have a i have a, I have a noah's bagels just down I'm the street i didn't, from I didn't so put a name i didn't put the name out there fresh. i didn't want to get in trouble but when you I want like, really great bagels i tell you what i like kevin i like a nice poppy seed bagel Oh, with a bit right. of jalapeno schmear on it because I like it a bit. I like it a bit of spiciness. <laughs> or like, like you, some nice lox and yeah. a little slivered onion and some capers. If I really want to kind of yeah. push the. So that, that, yeah. the thing that broke my heart is that we. I thought we had a bag of capers, or not a bag, a bottle of capers, and uh, yeah, I was very disappointed when I looked in the fridge, didn't find them. So I was like, well, all right, all right, back to news, back to news. Do, do, yeah, there is. If you really want to feel like you know super high class, you know fancy times, get mm -hmm. those capers on your bagel. This is the same thing, you know, living with somebody from Montreal that we order the, the gold belly. We get the St. Vatera or whatever. I can't pronounce it. Bagels or whatever. And then we freeze those and they're great. Anyway, <coughs> thank you. Sorry. Back to Ari at Kotaku with the Twitch article. Twitch streamers may soon be able to restrict who can or cannot hop into the chat. According to Twitch observer Zach Busey, uh, the streaming giant is planning on adding expanded features that would allow streamers to require phone or email verification from the commentarium. Uh, for, the most, for most of the summer, Twitch streamers have grappled with the scourge of hate raids. Thanks to the platform's raid feature, which allows streamers to redirect viewers to another channel, bad faith streamers can send droves of commenters to other channels in coordinated harassment campaigns. Most of these users show up with the worst possible intentions and then often flood channels with waves of sickening slurs and insults. The Washington Post reported these campaigns are organized off Twitch on clandestine Discord servers. Streamers told Kotaku that requiring users to register with a phone number would be one of the most effective methods for putting a stop to hate raids, far more effective than email verification, which already exists on the platform. It's easy to create alternative email addresses, so while requiring email verification for chatters is a speed bump, it doesn't stop the hate raids in their tracks. The way things stand now, since it's so easy to create new accounts on Twitch, banned streamers can simply create a new account and pop right back in uh, to the chat. Sometimes they do it with Brazen instance and they go on and build this. But Gary, we've been saying for a while, obviously, you know, do better for Twitch. Uh, this seems like a great option of, hey, require chatters to put in their email address. It's an option. But then as a streamer, be able to click a button and say only if they verified with their actual phone number. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it's not as easy to, you know, just generate endless phone numbers the way it is an email address. So, um, yeah, I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad to see Twitch, you know, making moves on this. Um, it's been incumbent, them, incumbent upon them for a while now since these hate raids uh, became a real problem. And they are a real, a, a real problem. I've not been the victim of, uh, of any of these myself, but that's large, largely, I think, because I'm a, you know, cis white, white male and I'm not a member of any kind of like marginalized or 
um, you know, my diversified community that are the targets of this. You know, there's a lot of racism and homophobia and, you know, all kinds of other bullshit going on that, that, that is leading to the, you know, the, the, the people who have been targeted by these raids and they, and they, you know, and they need better protection. They can't be, they, they shouldn't be expected to do it all themselves. There's all kinds of different steps that streamers uh, can take and have been taking to try and shut down these, these hate raids. But it really is incumbent on Twitch if they don't want this to become like a real, you know, problem for their platform. This has broken through into the mainstream media. Now, I read a story in the New York Times about it the other day. So clearly they've decided that it's now, you know, above the waterline enough that they need to, 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 to be making these these changes and be seen to making these changes you know, to protect their communities. And so I haven't had a chance to really look uh, or do a deep dive into what the, exactly what all the new tools and, and protections are or, you know, how well, effective the community this thinks they're going to be. But again, the, the, the fact that they're, they are responding and, you know, I'm, I, I like to see it because the current situation is not, not sustainable. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is obviously, you know, people have said over here, well, it's easy to create, and I'm talking about over here in the chat, uh, easy to create fake phone numbers, Google Voice, of course, but this is a start, right? This is where we need to be. There needs to be some more options. There need to be some ways. And even though there are putting more speed bumps, putting more ways in there, putting more restrictions on it, like you need to do something, right? You can't sit on your hands and Twitch and be like, well, it's easy to create fucking phone numbers. So why would we do that? Obviously, there's different things they need to figure it out. But there's a whole bunch of different stuff that obviously you can do with, you know, the amount of time people have been on, uh, you know, are they new or created accounts, uh, all these different things, right? Because here's how it would work still on Ari's article. Once these tools are live, if you're a streamer, you'll be able to require viewers to verify a phone number or email address before leaving comments. You could make it so they need to do so if they're chatting on your stream for the very first time, if their account hasn't been active for long, or if they follow you within a specific time frame, say a matter of hours or days. You can also set exceptions for VIPs, moderators, and subscribers. So it's one of those things, again, like I think it's more that I want to see progress. I want to see the ball start moving towards the good guy's side rather than the bad guy's side all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if this is, um, if, if no, this latest round of, of, of increased protections is going to be the magic bullet. Probably not. It's always an arms race, Greg. You know how it is, whether, you know, whether it's a war against software pirates or hackers or whatever, you know, you increase security or come up with a new thing, they'll find another workaround. You know, it's, it's, sure. it's, it's constantly move and counter move. So whatever new protections Twitch bring in now, there will be dedicated hackers and trolls and hate mongers who will find some other way to defeat that. And they'll have to come up with another mechanism and, you know, war never changes. War, war never changes. <laughs> Number four on the Roper Report. Outriders developers are actually going to be expanding to work on smaller games. This is Brendan Sinclair over at GamesIndustry.biz. People Can Fly today announced a change in strategy that will see it begin to branch out into AA games and new genres alongside its AAA shooter efforts. The Outriders studio said that its AA games would have quality comparable to its previous titles, but would be, quote, characterized by a shorter development time, lower budget, and smaller scope. The company also said that it uh, will be looking to work with new teams or possibly acquire new studios, specifically work on those titles with a goal of releasing at least one game each year beginning in 2024. People Can Fly already has seven studios globally after April's acquisition of Chicago-based Phosphorus or Phosphor uh, Studios. Uh, the company emphasized uh, that this new strategy will be pursued in addition to the previous one with the company working on multiple AAA games in parallel. I don't think there's much to commentate on it. Interesting to see, you know, again, we talk about the length of video game development time of a AAA game. And so if you're going to keep expanding, why not expand to make some smaller games to get more probably revenue in the door on a yearly annual basis, right, Gary? Yeah, I think there's more room for uh, in the market for, you know, I don't know whether or not kind of the economics really support it, but it seems like there is a big gap for like, like you said, like A and double A you know, kind of what you think is like mid-range games, you know, not not as small as an indie, but not as, you know, blow out as a, uh, you know, all or nothing, you know, major financial risk as a triple A game. Yeah. Similar situation in Hollywood. Hollywood knows how to, you know, the, the, the market has changed so much over the years that Hollywood knows how to make little, you know, little indie movies for like five, 10, 15 million dollars. They know how to make, you know, big blockbuster, 200 million dollar movies, but like, they don't seem they they don't seem to know how to make those mid range movies thirty forty fifty million dollars anymore. Like that market's just completely gone. They only understand small or big, and there's there's nothing in between. And it seems like that is actually a very similar situation in 
um, you know, video games right now. You've got these, you know, there's there's a the very vibrant indie market, low of, of cute, of low budget, often you know, wonderful games. And there's you know the handful of big, you know, mega mega releases that come out every year. But um, the the you know, those those mid range games that you know, uh, I I don't know, they it just doesn't seem to be as fertile a um a market anymore. So maybe something like this is a is a step in the right direction. Yeah, I think it's an interesting way, especially with a. a, a company that big uh, if you have that many developers working why not yeah get some people out there have some of those smaller ideas get them out there get them cranked kind of yeah, not, every, not everything has to be a big like put all your chips in the middle you sure. know five years of development you know 200 million dollar you know the, the student this is either make or break for the studio like not every game needs to be that you know spread your chips around a little bit spread your bets Reminds me of uh, what Double Fine was doing. Obviously, they uh, do big yeah, games good or whatever. But when they had stuff like stacking, when they had little things like Costume Quest, Massive Chalice, when they were doing smaller games uh, quicker, right? Uh, fifth and final on the Roper Report, Super Nintendo World is adding Donkey Kong in 2024. I'll read from the official press release here. Since its opening, Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Japan has gained worldwide attention from fans and guests who continue to level up with excitement while experiencing the land's rides, interactive-themed entertainment, and gameplay featuring iconic Nintendo characters. To further immerse guests into Nintendo's well-known series of games, Universal Studios Japan will expand the land to include a new area themed after Donkey Kong. The area will feature a roller coaster, interactive experiences, and themed merchandise and food. Guests will be able to take a walk on the wild side through the lush jungles where Donkey Kong and his friends live. The new area is set to open in 2024. The Universal Studios creative team and Nintendo creative team will bring the new Donkey Kong themed area to life. The area will be a game changer that combines the innovative technology and globally popular uh, approach to theme park entertainment of Universal with the creativity of Nintendo. With the addition of the Donkey Kong area, Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Japan will increase its size in a pro- will increase in size by approximately seventy percent. Gary, how heartbreaking is this? Remember, you were on the show when we talked about Super Nintendo the World the first time. You agreed to pay for Kevin to go to Japan to experience it. Oh, I was going to say exactly that, Greg. Every time I think about Super Nintendo World, and I, I saw this story earlier this morning, my what I was thinking about earlier today, and I was thinking about it while you were reading off the story. There was. If if it weren't for COVID, Kevin right now would be looking through all of his photographs and reliving all of his delightful memories from having already gone to Super Nintendo World on my dime. I would have paid for him to go. Remember, I made that offer and I was going to stick by it. Absolutely was happy to do it. I would have loved that. I would have loved you I, guys to have gone, had you know, no do a big kind of funny trip to uh, Super Nintendo World. I would have paid for Kevin's uh, yeah, share of it. Can. Alas, it was not to be. Just another victim of COVID-19. Sucks. Sorry. I but I know what do you think about this Donkey Kong? Like, I, I kind of feel I'm not a, maybe it's just me. I personally am not a Donkey Kong fan. I don't give a fuck about the Donkey Kong games. The Donkey Kong lore does nothing for me. Mario obviously makes perfect sense. If they were gonna add 70% onto this theme park, I don't know. I would I would either like gone like deeper into the Mario world or done Zelda, done like a Hyrule land or something. Donkey Kong, really? I don't know. Donkey Kong, uh, you know, is an incredibly recognizable character. Uh, I'm with you that I don't give a flying fuck about Donkey Kong. Sorry, Barrett. Sorry, yeah. Blessing. You know, I know they, they have their uh, with Donktober last year. Uh, I know they love that game. They love those. They have like, it's where your memories are. But of course, I think that's such a tight of thing. I wish it was Zelda Land. You kidding me? I wish they were doing oh, Legend yeah. of Zelda Land. Have a moon crash into the fucking thing every day to close the park. It'd be amazing. Uh, the, I mean, I mean, what's interesting is like the, the Mario games are still very much a thing, right? We just had Odyssey, Odyssey 2 is in development, Mario's Mario Golf just accurate. came out. You know, Mario, Mario, Mario. Nintendo's always going to make new Mario games. Zelda is still very much, you know, we just had Breath of the Wild, we had the Link's Awakening uh, reboot, we just had um, yeah, uh, Hyrule uh, Warriors, Calamity Wars, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, we've got, we know we've got Breath of the Wild 2 coming. When's the last time there was a big Donkey Kong game? Like the Donkey Kong, like Nintendo. I mean, we just had Cranky Kong, didn't we? Donkey Kong games anymore. Like, what the fuck? You know what, Gary? They're not making Donkey Kong games anymore. No one tried to correct them. Uh, but one day they will, but that's so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the ground. Oh, my gosh. Where would I go? Uh, the official list of upcoming software on each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Yeah. Out today, Polygon reports Dolby Vision support 
games will be available today on Xbox Series X and Series S, allowing owners of Microsoft's latest consoles to play dozens of compatible games with even better image quality than they already offer. Uh, Ghost Runner is on PS5, Xbox all around. Away is on the survival. I'm sorry, Away the Survival Series is on PlayStation all around, PC. Uh, Chernobylite is on PS4, Xbox One. Lemus Gate is on all PlayStation, all Xbox, PC. N- New World, as we've talked about a lot, is on PC if you can get in. Uh, Neo, The World Ends With You is on PC. Harvest Moon, One World is on Xbox One. Agatha Christie, Hercules, P- Pirat, the Hercule. first. Huh? Hercules. Hercules. Hercule. Okay, what's the second Hercule word? Hercule Poirot. Poirot? Poirot. Hercule Prowess is on the first case. Hercule Prowess. Hercules Prowess Mysteries. Yes, there you go. Well done. Stick, just stick with that. Hercules mm. Prowess <laughs> is on PS4, <laughs> Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Mac. Uh, Connect or Connect Tank is on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Knockout Home Fitness is on Switch. Outer Wilds, Echoes of the Eye is on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. In Sound Mind is on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S, PC. Kiwi is on PS5 and PS4. Steel Assault is on Switch and PC. Dandy Ace is on Xbox One and Switch. Alchemic uh, Cutie is on Xbox One. G, Darius HD is on Switch. Warp Frontier is on Switch. And Tom Ball Deluxe is on Switch. Unmetal is on Switch and PC. Fantasy Friends Under the Sea is on on switch concordia digital edition is on pc and before your eyes comes to mac today you okay there gary yeah i'm, I'm still thinking about hercules prowess that's fucking great that's i didn't say prowess all right say prow- 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 wow. Wow. you know that's where i was you know, I you've heard of hercule Poirot, right you know who that is no i have no idea who hercule hercule do you Everyone's know i mean you've heard, you, 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 i have no I fucking idea how to say the word let alone what you're saying have you do you know have you heard of murder on the orient express yes okay well that's hercule Poirot. That's the, he's the, that's he's the, the detective in those Agatha Christie stories. Oh, okay. Okay. Was he in Ten Little Indians? Was he in what? Ten Little Indians? Um, I don't remember if that's her. Like, does Agatha Christie that's use annihilate. the same dude and everything? There's a whole series of them. No, it's the series. She, she does not in a series of the, of the books. Like the Murder on the Orient Express, something in the Nile, right? Yeah, we, we just said all this, Kevin. No, gr- Greg just asked, "Is it a, a series?" And I said, "Or does she, it doesn't matter? Fine, f- whatever. All right." There is <laughs> there there is a whole series of Hercule Poirot mysteries, just in the same way there's a whole series of Sherlock Holmes mysteries. Yes. Okay, she, but she so does other it, books, though. She does other books. This guy's not in all the books, right? Got he does it. other all books. Right. That's correct. He's not in all of the Agatha Christie books, but he's like great. He's like the he's like the one. He's like the detective character that she's most. I think she probably wrote more Hercule Poirot stories than any other character, is my guess. Hercule I can't think of another Prower. character that's as famous as that one. Hercule, Hercule Prower. Hercule. Hercule. Poirot. Poirot. One more time. Poirot. Poirot. <laughs> Nailed it that time. You got it 100%. Did I? I don't know. I don't. It's This is. I don't know. I'm not. This isn't a bit. This isn't a bit. I'm trying. Everyone. I'm trying to be supportive. I know where your weaknesses are and what you're, Oof. you know, you get upset. Hercule. Hercule. Her, Hercule. Hercule. Power. Nope. Poir. Like, think of it like Poir. P-A-W. Poirot. Poirot. Row, row, row your boat. Yeah, Poirot. Right. Right. Mario Tex in the chat. Man, that's right. what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the chat. Mario Tex has it. Thank you very Greg, much. What part of I know you, don't you understand? Like, I know you were looking at that. I wanted to call him out because of that. You nailed it. Thank you. It's New dates up. for you. Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins is going to get an update soon. Uh, they tweeted, looks... Yeah, looks like you've been waiting for us. Tune into our Tokyo Game Show special broadcast on Saturday, October 2nd, to hear the latest on Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. The presentation will have full English subtitles. Pumpkin Jack New Gen Edition is hitting PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X slash S on October 27th, 2021. Battlefield 2042 Open Beta has got two sets of dates for you. Early Access is October 6th through the 7th, and then the Open Beta is October 8th through the 9th. And then launching this Friday on Apple Arcade is Thumper Pocket Edition. Uh, Meanwhile, for deals of the day, guess what, motherfuckers? Xbox Game Pass is adding Marvel's Avengers September 30th. PC, console, and cloud. Uh, Sure to bring in a lot of money to that game which will be good for the, me because i want more content for it interesting though hey uh, chris dynamics they're working on this uh, xbox exclusive with the initiative perfect arc now this is happening is something happening is square trying to get rid of crystal dynamics i'm sure the x castle talk about it this week 
We talked about it last week. Um, but now you have more evidence. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, the Game Pass move for Avengers. It, it, it's it's funny, like you can read that either way. Like it's a very positive move. Oh yeah, you know, coming to Game Pass, sure to expose it to all kinds of new players. Is it a desperation move? Going to Game Pass is almost like you know, ar- like after the fact, like the game's already out now, but now it's coming to Game Pass retroactively is almost kind of like it, they're saying it's going free to play, right? Because it's a bit, it's going to become free to all of those Game Pass owners. But hey, listen, whatever gets more people into the game, right? You hit the nail on the head earlier though, Greg. No, still no cross play. What the fuck? There's no excuse for it in this day and age. Uh, people, uh, you know, the Spider-Man thing on PlayStation is going to complicate matters and sh- shit. Of like, if I was going to play with you, what would happen when I play a Spider-Man and you play as anybody else? I don't know. Uh, for the actual business model of Avengers, and this is a conversation we can do another time, or I'll try to keep it short, though. I think it makes a lot of sense. Here's this game for free and buy all the character passes for 10 bucks. Buy all these uh, uh, Marvel Studios costumes for 10 bucks. Keep giving us 10 bucks hand over fist and keep the game yeah. coming so we get more stuff next year. Uh, and then Xbox Games with Gold got announced for October. Uh, you can get Arrow uh, October 1st through the 31st. Hover uh, October 16th through the November 15th. Castlevania Harmony of Despair October 1st through the 15th. And then Resident Evil Code Veronica X October 16th through the 31st. Is that a good? Is that considered? Well, if I if I ask someone who knows a lot about Resident Evil, is Code Veronica X one of the good ones? What would they say? I, I'm not somebody who knows a lot about Resident Evil. Mm, mm, <laughs> I would mm. I would tell you, don't ask me. I, I played I, uh, Code Veronica on PS2 was my first uh, Resident Evil of all time. I enjoyed it fine. I'm sure it wouldn't hold up today. Or maybe Dreamcast. It wouldn't hold up that was a Code Veronica, wasn't it? What was the Dreamcast? Yeah, yeah, Code Veronica was Dreamcast. Yeah, yeah, and then, but then yeah, it got, yeah. eventually got ported uh, when I played it. Okay. All right, cool. Um. Oh yeah, uh, Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. The right to be part of the show to participate, and also, of course, to Squad Up. Uh, Borzin Double Zero writes into Squad Up. Uh, where does he need help? on everything and he gives a discord discord.gg slash turbo tax in space all one word discord.gg turbo tax in space all one word and he misspells space yeah okay he means space uh borders and writes this month has been the second annual ish time the kind of funny destiny 2 pc clan has been producers and now that the month is coming to an end our goals were hit we confused nick and we got a bunch of kind of funny best friends talking about <laughs> destiny with the final week, I want to make sure everyone who wants to talk or play Destiny with us uh, can hop on and do whatever they want Destiny-related. Note, while most of us are playing on PC with crossplay, we have had an explosion of players on console, and we'll take anyone playing on console. If you, ladies and gentlemen, want to play some Destiny 2 with Boars and Double Zero and the kind of funny Destiny 2 PC clan, go to discord.gg slash turbo tax in space discord.gg slash turbo tax in space yeah we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later uh on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe um what do we got here now uh, uh greg from edmonton uh, says, not that you're wrong, but to add some info, this is about a uh, new world in the servers. Final mm. Fantasy uh, 14 servers are overloaded right now, and the devs have said that they couldn't throw, I'm sorry, let me try all this again. Final Fantasy servers are overloaded right now, and the devs have said that they could throw all the money they want at the problem, and it wouldn't fix it, because you just can't get servers right now due to a chip shortage. Interesting wrinkle. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, there's that as well. I mean, the actual physical yeah, I feel constraints. Like Amazon could probably get. But that's it. what I'm saying. Oh, Amazon's oh. got the servers, right? They've got them. The man guess, himself. Boris, that's what I said earlier about big companies. Just because one corner of Amazon wants another, you know, only semi-related part of Amazon to help them out. Like Amazon Games and Amazon Web Services are not connected at all. They, you know, they're completely different parts of the company. So there's no guarantee mm. that just because Am- one part of Amazon has this massive infrastructure, then this, that, that, you know, that Amazon Games is going to be able to leverage that. Not at all. Yeah, you nailed that. You nailed that. That's true. Boris in himself writes in and says, as someone who runs things uh, on AWS and as a web and network dev, I can say they had the capacity, but the issue is provisioning the networking. You can have the capacity, but if the door can only let 10 people in at a time, that's the issue. Our current networking infrastructure has some issues uh, with allowing a ton of traffic to go to one place, some of it due to security. Uh, but a lot of it has is actually because of old technology. The other issue is provisioning takes at a time. You can have capacity, but creating a new server takes time. 
Uh, Charles Jacobson editorializing a bit, but mentioning that Final Fantasy Endwalker is coming out November 23rd, so it could be worth checking in on New World Concurrence at that late November. Dude, I think it, you can check in in a week, and I think you'll have, we'll have a better story of what that actually means over there. Oh, um, for sure. <laughs> Nanobiologist writes in, this is breaking. Microsoft is starting to test xCloud integration on Xbox consoles today. Some Xbox insiders in the alpha skip ahead ring will get access to the features and let you stream games to console, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I'm interested to try that Dolby Vision thing on Xbox. One of the things that I've noticed that once you get an HDR TV, once you once you've had once you've experienced HDR game content, you can't go back. Like any game that doesn't support HDR just sees just seems so dim and dull and kind of washed out compared to the vibrancy of HDR. So, you know, obviously Dolby Vision is just another flavor of HDR, um but if it brings more HDR content to the Xbox, great because I, I i played i can't remember what it was i played recently it doesn't support hdr and it just it just felt so dim and drab mm -hmm. and when mm -hmm. like when that little hdr logo pops on your on your tv to like, tell you that this game supports hdr and that mode's been activated and you just see those colors like burst through oh my god it's the best oh uh, no no but i just says missed out today microsoft flight sim adds junkers uh as part of its local legend series to celebrate history of aviation uh boars and double zero says yes greg i totally misspelled space turbo tax in space and then a hip-hop anonymous points out uh greg it was called 10 little indians when you were a child it's now called and then there were none I uh, know you didn't mean to offend anybody. Well, of and course it was, not. And it was, it was called something even before 10 Little Indians, which is no longer, well, never was, but certainly is completely unacceptable now. They had to change it. Well, there you go. Of course I didn't. Yeah, it's just uh, obviously things have changed since I was reading books. Because let me tell you, I haven't picked one of those up in a long time. All right. <laughs> I got the internet. Nerds. Look at, I mean, look at this. Like, they, and defending you're, oh, you're having a baby. Send you a baby book. It's like, oh, God. Yeah. Man, I, bought, that, right? I mean, we bought that book 10 years ago. Same one. I'm going to be swaddling King. Look at that. You put him in a Superman symbol? Trust me. I've been folding sheets into Superman symbols for years. I'm like, I got no problem. Let me tell you it. something. All, let, let me tell you something. All those books go out the window Yeah. once you're actually staring it in the face. They, 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 you, can, you, you can learn some interesting stuff, but 90% of it is just going to be finding your own way. Of course. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this episode. It's still a weekday. That means you got a twitch.tv slash kind of funny game stream after this. It's going to be New World with Mike uh, and a whole bunch of people, including Bruce Green. Uh, if you want to watch that later, youtube.com slash kind of funny plays. Tomorrow, I will be back here hosting this show, Kind of Funny Games Daily, with the one, the only Snowbike Mike. We're going to have some fun. It'll be oh. Tam and Tim on Thursday. It'll be Janet and me on Friday. Uh, we have a post show to do on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where, of course, you can go support us, get your questions read, get ready for that games cast this afternoon. But until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.